Welcome back to Roadkill Radio's Drive for Justice. This week, we watch the ship run aground. No one can say for sure, I don't suppose, what sank that titanic of BC broadcasting in the 1990s, the dynamic duo of Rafe Mayer and Carrie Simpson. But we can observe some of the events that occurred just around the time the ship hit the iceberg. Carrie's frequent appearances on Rafe Mayer's radio show were only a small part of her work in the 90s. The vast majority of her time was spent running the Citizens Research Institute, defending families before provincial bureaucrats, and speaking at public rallies. Now, some of those rallies got so rambunctious that the managers of the venues where Carrie spoke insisted that she had to have police protection. And it wasn't that Carrie riled up or incited the crowds, but sex activists and other left-wing groups like the International Socialists, who had made death threats against Carrie and her family, they were always a danger to the public peace. So Carrie complied and hired off-duty cops or others, other guards when needed to keep the peace. But after a decade of working together, in March of 1997, Rafe Mayer apparently received some phone calls about Carrie after she had been interviewed on another radio station. And without checking to find out what she had actually said, it seems, he believed whatever his informants told him. She was strident, he said, on a broadcast that he later acknowledged he hadn't actually heard. Hmm. Listeners to the broadcast that Rafe did after those phone calls later telephoned Carrie upset at his imputations about her ideas and her character. Carrie wrote to Rafe then, and again in May, offering to discuss the issue of sex activism in the schools. But now that door was firmly shut. Later, when the notorious Surrey Books case broke in the news, Rafe Mayer made reference to Carrie Simpson and her ilk as part of the problem. Now, an important distinction has to be made here. Carrie Simpson was never involved in the Surrey Books case. However, she did help one family to defend before the school board their decision to take their son out of James Chamberlain's class. Chamberlain was the sex activist teacher at the heart of the Surrey Books case, but that was not why the parents wanted their son out of his kindergarten class. Rather, they objected to Chamberlain's dictum that his young students had to abandon their religious principles at the classroom door among numerous other bizarre teaching practices. Rafe, in several broadcasts, not only said that Carrie was involved in the Surrey Books case, but he also insisted that her motivation for helping the parents withdraw their son was not that the teacher was violating the rights of his small charges and abusing his role as a teacher, but simply because the teacher was gay. Now, that's ironic, because Carrie is actually on record as saying that the three pro-gay books should be allowed in the schools as long as the parents' right to be informed was respected. But Rafe continued to confuse the issues, and astonishingly, later on the courts would compound the error by citing as fact the very accusation that was at issue in a defamation lawsuit. Rafe was wrong. Carrie wrote to him and to the radio station to inform them that he was wrong and offered again to come on his program to discuss the issue. The offer was refused, but Rafe's tirades continued and they worsened. Eventually, he was comparing Carrie to skinheads, to the Ku Klux Klan, to Nazis, even to Adolf Hitler. 
His campaign of hate went on for more than two years, comprising more than 40 editorials. Reusing material to get the maximum mileage out of his writing, Rafe not only broadcast them, but also ran them in print and posted them on various internet blogs. Finally, to stop the stream of hatred and defamation, Carrie sued. And just wait till you hear how Canada's so-called justice system handled that case. But we'll get into that next week.